Let's pause for a moment and be in prayer. O oh God, of all the words spoken today, may it be your living word that remains. Give us the grace to receive it and the charity to let all the other words slip away. Amen. For both this Sunday and next especially, and just a little bit of the following, we talk about the story of Joseph and the way in which the lectionary has lined it out for us this year is really not to do justice to the totality of the story. The Joseph story within Genesis constitutes 14 chapters of Genesis. Now in biblical speak that's a lot of real estate. That is a lot of biblical real estate being occupied by the story of a person. And to that end, it would seem then to indicate to us that there's stuff in this story we might need to pay attention to. There are more than a few teachable moments. So what I would encourage you, invite you to over the next several weeks, is to live with Genesis 37 through 50. We'll be touching uh, little parts of that and we'll have to fill in some gaps for the sequence to make sense. But this story, at least in how it begins, is no doubt familiar to you. Uh, this church has lived with a dramatic element of this story. Uh, some of you were here when that happened. Uh, I was here when it was planned and then I left before it was uh, executed. Um, I may be relieved by that after hearing how that went with all the trials and travails to pull that off and air conditioners blowing up and whatever. So I, I get that. Nonetheless, the story of, uh, as we most commonly know it through Andrew Lloyd Webber, notwithstanding, there is something deeply dramatic and real here. And why is that the case? Not so much that we need to rehash or exegete the nature of what's going on in chapter 37, but more to the point, because we do have a level of familiarity with it, what are some of the core issues that might ring true in us? Maybe so much room is given to Joseph because in his story, whether or not we care to admit it, there is much of our own. A desire for notice, favoritism, aspirations for much and more. And then there's those dreams. For any of us to be consumed by any of those things carries with it the potential of volatility especially within a family system. But to be that way as one of a dozen kids whose parent has his own history of familiar issues, we do remember Jacob wrestling, which we spoke to last week, and hearkened back upon his story of birthright stealing and deceptions of all kinds. You put that into the mix and there's going to be combustion it may be an ancient story, but it speaks to the heart of many a modern family, to be sure. We don't have to turn on a soap opera to watch the drama and intrigue of what it means to be in a family system. We don't have to watch the horrific news that comes on seemingly every night of a family that couldn't quite figure it out, work it out, and found that it was left to extreme measures to take care of matters that it could not in some way do in a healthy way. For many of us, all we have to do is go to Thanksgiving with our own. And all of the characters are there in some way or another. The good and the bad. 
I don't know about you, but I can recall often it's the case when I would return to family, as, even as an adult, finding myself relegated to the role I occupied in the family when I was a kid. It's, it's hard to figure out how I'm going to be that way. When in my life otherwise, I'm not that guy. But if you were like any of the brothers in the story who's who, the kid, who is the one who is the dreamer, he's the one who is clearly, as indicated in Scripture, the favorite. He's the one that gets that darn coat. If you know that feeling of sibling rivalry confirmed and enacted by a parent whose overt favoritism just seems to be out of sorts, and if in you there's even a nudge of what we perceive as an act of justice when the siblings dispatch of the punk brother, then we understand. And there is that, isn't there, a little bit? We look at what happened to Joseph and we think, eh, too bad for you, but I get it. If, if he was in my family, if I was in the same situation, I might have done something similarly the same way. But like the dreamer, like the ones who hear the dreamer's pomposity and find it unpalatable, like the parent whose overt facts, acts of favoritism enable the environment out of which extreme behaviors rise. And true enough to at least plan it to kill, but then to dispatch, even though Reuben wanted to come back and save. Oh, there was all kinds of reasons why what happened was not necessarily what they meant to happen, but then it happened, and what do you do? You cover it up, and as we've all learned, it's not the crime so much as it is the cover-up. And of all of that, those extreme behaviors... There is something at work in us if we open our hearts to a grace that could be operative. Families. I mean, really, families, right? I mean, we've, we've got them. We've got to live with them. It's hard. How is it that some of the same people that can elicit from us the most wonderful feelings of joy and gratitude can at the same time elicit in us the exact opposite of that? And sometimes in the same day. And sometimes even in the same conversation. I love my family. I like most of them. I have some of my family that a couple hours, once a year, I'm good. I, I'm, it's okay. And, and trust me, I, and I don't say this in any other way but the truth, I know the feeling is mutual. So it's okay. <laughs> what do we do? What do we glean from this story? Again, ancient as it is, but as current as the next family gathering you have. There is this undercurrent at work in all of our family stories. Bringing to light outcomes based not on what anyone deserves, because Joseph in his own way deserved what he got, but what rather we long for most, which is to belong, to matter, to be loved and accepted no matter what, to reconcile and mend what arrogance and self-servitude has fractured. That undercurrent at work 
beyond the sight and sound of the actors in the story. And there was this undercurrent at work in this story. Be it found deep in Torah or in the story of your life has a name. It may take a long time before we recognize it. For Joseph, it's 14 chapters worth, which is a long time, a lot of real estate and Bible. For us, it may be 14 years. It may take something like a dreamer's dream that once caused us to throw away someone to be the very thing that saves us. As it was for Joseph and his brothers and his father. It indeed has many names. I call it grace. Grace based not on what we deserve because God knows if we get what we deserve, we're all in trouble. We're even in trouble if someone gets what we think they deserve. That's a little more fun than thinking about we getting what we deserve individually. We're far better at indicating and presuming what someone else deserves based on what we understand justice is. Despite my own wants and tendencies to mete out justice at my own pleasure, you don't want that. And I don't either. But what I want to do more than anything within family be it the family of my birth, be it the family that is growing continually. And yes, I have to give a shout out to my kid who is 13 today. I have no, my last teenager, uh, my, my newest and last teenager is here, who was born in this church. This is part, you are part of his family too. And that is the case, isn't it? It is the family we have by biology or we're adopted into. It's the family we choose to live with here in this place. And like a family that we belong to by blood, a church family that we belong to can elicit some of the very same emotions that we often can find when we gather around the Thanksgiving table once a year church family. It's an interesting thing. It can be a blessing. It can cause us to drive each other crazy. But this version, this modern family we have here, as different as we are, from all the places we come from, the stories that we have, the glad hearts that we might have, the burdens that we carry, the sense of pain that may be endless. It is here in this place together, this family together. That some of you may be dreaming, dreaming of what could be. And your dreams might seem crazy to some of the rest of us. But I will never say stop dreaming. It is in this place, together, this family, that God is at work. Sometimes it's the big overt thing, and then more often than not, it is that undercurrent that pulls us together in a time of crisis. That's what church family does. That's what our families tend to do. It's what a church family can do for one of us whose biological family can't be that support. That's what we do. If what we long for more than anything is to belong and to be loved, where else 
Where else on God's green earth could that possibly be true? That within the family of those who truly open their hearts, minds, and doors to one another. Thanks be to God for the story of Joseph, a long story indeed. Read it this week. Read it this week. And watch what dreams can do. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.